Hey everyone, Mike over here at Streetside Classics in Charlotte, bringing another YouTube video today. I also want to remind you to please subscribe and click that notification for future videos. Today we're going to be talking about Chevrolet Chevelles, one of the coolest cars out there, one of our top four sellers. We sell about 4,000 vehicles a year, and these are definitely one of the hottest vehicles out on the market, and we're going to talk about them a little bit today. Behind me, I got a 1966 and a 1970 Chevelle. As far as Chevelles go, they are probably one of the most popular muscle cars just because of the performance they have and their styling. The earlier ones started off in 1964 and they went all the way into the mid 70s. They had about a 14 year lifespan as far as that model style goes. Arguably, the GTO was the first muscle car and they did start that competition. But again, I would say that the Chevelle stole the show. This 1966 Chevelle, for example, one of the more popular years, and it's actually becoming a little bit more popular as the years go, just because of the fact that some of the later years, like the 70 back here, are starting to really increase in value. Uh, still a very pretty car, and it's a really desirable vehicle. These vehicles can be equipped with small block V8s, and also big block as well. Obviously, being a very big vehicle, those big blocks and being a muscle car, that's what everybody thinks about. When you think about a muscle car, you think about big block, you think about horsepower, and you think about manual transmissions. And you can get all three of those with one of these vehicles. As far as engine options go, again, you could get a, even an inline six, a V8, a uh, small block or a big block V8 as well. The big blocks were either 396s or 454s. For the big blocks, you had a, what they called an L34 option, which was a, a little bit lower horsepower 396. You had a L78, which is a little bit larger horsepower 396. Then you had the most desirable, the LS5 and the LS6. The LS6 is the king of all Chevelles. It was a 454 rated at 450 horsepower and 500 foot pounds of torque. Put in comparison, that thing was the king on the road as far as 1970 muscle cars went. One of the biggest competitions was the Hemi powered vehicles that Dodge and Plymouth offered. And quarter mile, which is what all these muscle cars were rated against, it was the fastest every single test. So let's talk about this 1970 for a little bit. Again, it's arguably the most desirable year. It's the pinnacle of muscle cars. It's what pretty much everybody thinks about when they think of muscle cars. It's got the dual quad headlights up front, which everybody loves. They can be optioned with a cow hood. Uh, sometimes they even have a, a cow induction hood that allows a little bit more fresh air into them. They have a hard top design, which means that there's no pillar here. Also, they can be equipped with an automatic transmission or manual transmission as well. Uh, again, you know, a lot of times people do like that manual transmission so they can row through the gears, but sometimes people do like automatics as well. As far as desirability, the manual transmission is always going to be more desirable. When people think of a muscle car, they always think of that manual transmission, they just think about rowing through the gears. There's, there's nothing more, than, uh, more desirable than a, that visceral sort of physical uh, connection with the transmission of the car and yourself. So let me show you underneath the hood of this 1970 Chevelle. So underneath here, as you would any highly desirable Chevelle, you're going to find a big old Chevy big block motor. Uh, they look great, they have a great presence, and boy, do they have an awesome rumble to them. These Chevelles were made to have a, a wide array of engines in them, so if you see, the engine bay is huge. Uh, plenty of modifications can be done to them, and plenty of accessibility to anything that you need to work on inside this engine bay. Uh, this particular model, it looks like it has a aftermarket aluminum intake as well. That's not uncommon. It's a muscle car. People do any sort of upgrades to them, especially performance oriented. Uh, this one even has headers as well. Again, very typical thing. Uh, people will always try to do whatever they can to increase horsepower in these cars. And again, that's what they're all about is horsepower. With this particular Chevelle, as you can see, this one again just has the standard cow hood. Sometimes you'll actually see a, a different style of air cleaner that actually has a rubber boot. And that's actually so that it can seal up to the hood uh, for the, the actual cal induction that some of these sometimes have as well. And again, that's just so it can suck in a little bit more air and it's a little bit higher end of a model. And that was a factory option with these vehicles. So let's talk about this 1966 Chevelle for a little bit. The reason why I really wanted to show you this one is especially because this is one of the more popular body styles. 
but also because these 1970s have become so expensive, some of the other models have actually become a little bit more popular because they're a little bit more affordable. The 66 and 67 share very similar body styles, whereas the 66 grille, it's a little bit more straight across. The 67 actually has a little chiseled edge to it. But again, they look very similar. You can also tell the 66 and the 70, they do have their differences. So what's cool about the Chevelle is that it has a little bit of different flavor for whatever somebody likes. And then also now I can show you underneath the hood of this one as well. And as you can see, this one's a little bit different with, from the 70 here. This one has a little bit more of a stock style looking to it. It is a 396, it's a little bit smaller engine, uh, but it's still a big block, so it has a really cool sound to it. And as you can see, even from the factory, they were really cool cars. Now this one was upgraded with a electronic ignition, but again, for the most part, it's, uh, it's pretty much stock, and I believe this is actually the original motor that came in this car. And what's really cool about this car especially, what we don't see right now, around the back, you'll actually see a tow hitch. Because the people that own this vehicle, they actually use this to tow around their motorhome. So I think that has a little bit of coolness to it, just the fact that this car shows that it was once a normal everyday car for somebody, but yet today we look at it and we just say, oh wow, that's a really cool muscle car that you just take to shows on the weekends when Somebody use it to tow a camper behind it. So just like today's cars, where vehicles can be optioned out to exactly what the customer wants, is exactly how they were back in the day as well. This 66 Chevelle in particular has one of the coolest options I think of whenever I think of a muscle car. I know that some people like it, some people don't, but that's what's cool about them. It's all about our personal taste. This car here has a split back bench seat with a manual transmission. I think that's the coolest option in the world because when you see a bench, you probably automatically think of like an automatic on the column. But the fact that there's a four on the floor in this car, it just, it's just so cool. Because obviously, you know, all these thoughts of grandeur, all these ideas that we have in our mind whenever we're buying this classic car, usually it involves our significant other being cuddled up next to each other. What's more romantic than a bench seat? All right, so right now, we're in, out in the middle of the showroom and I wanted to show you a couple other Chevelles that we have for sale. So behind me here is another 66 Chevelle, kind of like that blue one I showed you, but it's a little bit different model. If you notice, this one actually has that pillar where it wouldn't really be considered a, a hard top, it's actually a what they call a post car. And also, I mean, look how pretty this thing is. Red gut interior, and of course, split back, bench seat and a manual transmission. So we talked about the 70 Chevelle being the most popular and some of these other years being up and coming and starting to become more popular just due to the cost of the 70. Just like the 66s, we have also the 72s and 71s. The easiest way to be able to tell these is this corner light right here. When you're seeing a 72, just like this one, there's no divider here. A 71 will have a little divider right in the turn signal here. So 72s are becoming more popular as well because a lot of people like this single headlight design. If you notice, any, any of the previous Chevelles I've shown you, they're all dual headlights. With single headlights, some people just like that a little bit better. Another cool design of the 71 and 72 Chevelles are the taillights. Instead of a single taillight design, they actually have a dual round taillight design, which Again, preference, I actually like that look a little bit better. This one in particular, if you notice, it has some stripes on the side. This is actually made to be looked like a, a Baldwin Motion tribute vehicle. Wow, <laughs> look at this paint job on this car. This thing is heavily modified. It's got cool aftermarket paint job, cool wheels. It's got a great look. This is a 1969 Chevelle. Again, one of the more desirable years as well. So they got 68 and 69 body styles. They look very similar to one another. This thing is gorgeous. I know. This isn't a Chevelle, this is a El Camino. However, they do share the front, same front end, and I wanted to show you a little bit of differences, kind of like that 72 I just showed you. I wanted to show you this 1971. If you look at this turn signal here, this is that little, the divider that I was telling you about earlier. So that's how you can tell between a 71 and 72. Also, another reason why I wanted to show you this is when I was talking about that 1970 Chevelle, and I was talking about that cowl induction hood, this one has one. This is actually vacuum actuated. So as soon as the car starts, the flap shuts. 
As soon as you start giving the vehicle a little bit of gas, the flap will actually open up a little bit to allow a little bit more fresh air. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for checking out our video. Please let us know if you have any questions or comments, concerns. Please make sure you do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are uploading content daily on all of our new arrivals.